was a creep pushed that in. Because I don't, that's for the kids. Just raise and lower it, right? There's some nice boosters up here for our incoming governor, but it makes me really tall. So this is fun. Well, I want to welcome you. My name is Shamia Fagan. I'm honored to serve as Oregon's 28th Secretary of State. And I am so excited to be here with all of you celebrating the 2023 Oregon Kid Governor, Leah Andrus. Let's give her a round of applause. That is the noise I've been waiting to hear. It is very quiet. I used to serve here in this chamber in the Oregon Senate, and it's never this quiet. So I think sometimes the adults are getting a little rambunctious. They need to bring y'all back in and show them how to just be calm, because this is the most quiet this chamber has ever been. As secretary, I'm very proud of the Kid Governor program. The growth has been really extraordinary. Right before I took office in 2020, 42 classrooms across the state in the year 2020 participated in Kid Governor. And this last year, over 127 classrooms participated. Now that's some growth. We had 14 nomination videos in 2020 and we had 21 nomination videos in 2022. Almost 3,300 kids participated from La Grande to Seaside, Cave Junction to Klamath Falls, Tiger to Pleasant Hill, Sherwood to the metro area and beyond. You know what, I am honest, I am glad I was not a judge because I've seen your videos and I can't even imagine how the choices were made. They are such incredible videos and we are all so lucky to have you. I am, as Secretary of State, my mission is to build trust. That's my job. So my job is to build trust with Oregonians so they can trust the public services that make a positive impact in people's lives. And it was so exciting to be able to look at the cabinet members for Kid Governor this year and to see how you plan to, what, to make your signature issue. Reduce, reuse, recycle was Amelia's from Oregon Shoals Height Elementary. Amelia's here today. Ava is working on combating racism. Ava from Beaverton in Indian Hills Elementary. Clyde working on healthier schools from Central Elementary in La Grande. Elle working on pollution, Portland, Oregon, Bonnie Slopes Elementary. Induleka working on health care, that's a big one, from Adams Elementary in Eugene, and Kate working on pollution from Kaiser, Oregon, Optimum Learning Environment Center. I like that, that your community issue is these things. So my community issue is building trust. And so I'm so excited to welcome you here today. Next, I wanna ask current kid governor, Emery Martin, to come and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Emery. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Emery. You know, I'm glad that I get to be here with Emery today. Emery is our outgoing 2022 Oregon Kid Governor. It has been an extraordinary, yes, we can give her a round of applause. Let's give it up for Emery. It has truly been an extraordinary year of change. I know during your term as Kid Governor Emery, on the ongoing pandemic, but through it all, you have successfully worked your platform on ending animal abuse. And I know that when we went down south to give Emery the announcement that she was kid governor a year ago, the Secretary of State 
my three-year-old uh, Labradoodle came with us and made quite the impact in your classroom. And I will say that he is not with us here today because the Capitol building is a little bit formal for a bouncy dog to be around, but from both the Secretary of State and my new puppy, um, they are very, very happy to know that you're out there ending animal abuse in Oregon. We got a chance to meet. Emery and I were at the Oregon State Fair together at the archives booth. And if you ever go to the Oregon State Fair, you get to see a ton of cool animals. So Emery and I got to see cool animals together at the Oregon State Fair. And you held supply drives and actions. You made a huge impact getting the word out about ending animal abuse and your three-point plan. You've demonstrated a spirit of kindness, compassion, and generosity. Thank you, Emery, for all you have done. There are big things ahead of you. I'm not certain of a lot in this world, but I'm certain of one thing, and that is that there are big things in store for you. And so I only have one request. Will you please still answer my call when you're the adult governor of Oregon? Is that a yes? Okay, sure. It's a sure. I'll take a sure. So with that, Emery, it is time for you to give your farewell address. Let's welcome for the last time as our current governor, Emery Martin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emery Martin, and it is my honor and extraordinary privilege to speak to you for the last time as Oregon's 2022 Kid Governor. The last year went by fast, but was filled with new experiences, opportunities, personal growth, and so much good. Exactly one year ago today, I was in the midst of my own inauguration. Although it was virtual and I stood in front of a computer screen, I'm sure I experienced some of the same emotions the many governors preceding me felt. I was nervous and maybe a little unsure, but most of all, I was excited and eager to step into this new role. As I stand before you today, I can admit that some of those same, same feelings have returned. However, I am no longer unsure of my position or nervous to take a stance or advocate for change. I can confidently say that running for Oregon Kid Governor was a great decision. I won the 2022 election on a platform of preventing animal abuse. I had no idea what a big undertaking it was until I set out to accomplish my three-point plan, starting with a program I called Linda Paw. The acronym PAW stands for Participate, Acknowledge, and Welcome. Participate by volunteering at animal shelters or organizing fundraisers and supply drives for local humane societies. Acknowledge that animals need love, care, and attention, and welcome animals into an informed and educated home. With the help of my peers and community, I organized a supply drive for my local humane society. We were able to donate over 250 pounds of food, numerous pet beds, toys, leashes, and treats. Delivering these items and seeing how they would not only help the animals in the humane society, but also the animals through the, food the animal food pantry was a highlight for me. In addition, I fundraised for my local humane society at Bark in the Park and ran my first 5K in support of thousands of animals they see each year. I helped announce Pet of the Week on TV and shared Lenda Paw with several shelters and humane societies. I held the supply drive and created a how-to video so other kids could host one at their school too. I also filmed an informational video on how to be a good pet owner and shared my platform and advocated for animals on many media outlets. Parts of my plans were relatively easy to accomplish and probably more in line with the kid governor's abilities, but like all who have held office, I have experienced obstacles and setbacks. The last part of my plan, stopping people who have been convicted of animal abuse from adopting or buying another animal, is probably more reachable for someone who has more than a fifth grade education and maybe has a law degree. <laughs> Nevertheless, I feel honored to have been given the opportunity and platform to speak out against animal abuse. I am so grateful for all the experiences and opportunities I was given this year, but I never could have done them alone. I am so fortunate to have so many people extend themselves and invest in me so I could be successful during my term. First, a huge thank you to Nikki, our Kid Governor State Coordinator. Thank you for leading me on this journey and showing me so much kindness and grace. Thank you, Secretary Fagan, for traveling south to meet me and spending time with me at the State Fair. That was really fun. Thank you to Green Hill Humane Society, especially Megan, for being an invaluable resource and giving me countless opportunities and continued support. 
Thank you to the students at Pleasant Hill Elementary School for believing in me and my principal, Ms. Stoneberg, and teacher, Ms. Shadden. Ms. Shadden, thank you for your guidance, commitment to me, and always for, being, for always being available. Thank you to my wonderful cabinet members for partnering with me while also working on accomplishing your own platforms, and to my friends back home who helped out with numerous things and supported me all throughout my term. And finally, thank you to my parents for their constant encouragement and unwavering love and support, and to my younger brothers for always cheering me on and going with the flow this last year. Leah, I could not be happier that you're Oregon's next kid governor, and I am excited to follow along as you promote kindness and foster friendships between classmates. As President Thomas Jefferson once wrote, I like the dreams of the future better than the history of the past. So Leah, as I pass the torch to you today, know that Oregon is cheering for you and your dreams of the future. In just a few minutes, Leah will be sworn in and my term will have ended. But just because it has ended doesn't mean my desire to create change has to. I've never felt like I needed a title to do that, and that's what I want to end with today. You don't need a fancy title or position to create change or to be a voice for someone. It only takes one person standing up or speaking out to make a big impact. And I thank you for letting me make an impact this year. Whenever I've heard Emery speak, the thought that comes to my mind is always that the future is in very, very good hands. Thank you, Emery. It's been an honor to serve with you, and I'm going to keep you on that sure that you'll pick up my phone call, okay? As we move forward into our new governor, I want to invite Patricio, Leah's grand, our incoming governor's grandfather, to come up and provide a blessing for our ceremony today. So please welcome Leah's grandfather, Patricio. Father in heaven, and this afternoon we ask him for your spirit and you bless him this building and blessing each person he work in this building. Father, we say thank you for your spirit and thank you for the governor Kathy Brown for your for your time, for your decision for this, this state. Father, please bless him a new governor this state. This is Kaiti. And Father, bless him my granddaughter, Leah, in this year, she make a better decision for the children. And bless him this country, Father, I'm saying this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, it is time. It is time for the esteemed Chief Justice Paul Dominguez of the Oregon Supreme Court to come and to address you, and then we will be swearing in our new cabinet members and our new Kid Governor Leah Andrus. So, Mr. Chief Justice, if you want to make your remarks from here, and then sure. we will have the, why don't we have the students come up now, yes. so as they're speaking, so let's have the cabinet members and Leah come up front here, I'll meet you, and then Chief Justice Dominguez will make his remarks and he'll come down and swear you in. Well, th thank you, uh, Secretary of State Fagan. I, I want to just add something to your remarks. Retired. <laughs> Uh, it, it's just a great pleasure to be here and, and to see all the families and um, these wonderful young people. I'd like to leave you with just a, one very, I think, important thought, and, and it should be apparent to uh, all of you in this room over the last few years that our appreciation of democracy and our appreciation of civic virtue is not passed down in our DNA. It's something that has to be taught and nurtured to every generation of Americans. And so I want to acknowledge the late Dennis Richardson, Secretary of State, who started this program. I want to thank Secretary Fagan for continuing this wonderful program. 
Uh, it means a lot to me and others who care deeply about our constitutional form of government that we are reaching out to young people for civic education as absolutely the best we can. So I'll, uh, without further ado, we'll have each cabinet member come up to the podium, state your name, state the city or town you're from, what your three-point plan is, and let's see, is there anything else here you need to say? <laughs> I think that, yeah, and then just, just, we can just go like this through there. So we'll, we'll start with Amelia, we'll, Amelia first. My name is Amelia. I am from the Beaverton School District and I live in Tiger. My platform was to, it was to get more people to reduce, reuse, and recycle. My first platform point was to get more recycling bins for schools across Oregon. My second platform point was to educate younger students about recycling. And my third platform point was to encourage other fifth graders to start their own environmental groups. Hi, my name is Ava McAdams. I'm from Beaverton and I go to Indian Hills Elementary. My platform is ending racism and my three point plan that goes along with it is fun clubs, fundraisers, and flyers. The first part of my plan is to make clubs for all Oregon fifth graders to join and spread awareness to this issue. The second part of my plan is to coordinate fundraisers and put the money towards organizations that help stop racism. The third and final part of my plan is to create flyers that students can use to tell other people about themselves. Thank you. Um, I'm Clyde and I go to Central Elementary and live in the Grand. My platform is to get healthier schools and my three point plan that goes along with that is to get physical activity more, more physical activity during the day, more after school clubs and healthier and better school lunches. My name is Al Downs. I go to Bonnie Slope Elementary and I live in Portland. My platform is um, cl helping clean up our oceans and waterways. And my three point plan that goes along with that is ARP, awareness, reuse, and pick up. I'll increase knowledge of threats to our oceans and waterways, um, encourage people to reuse items to reduce trash in our oceans and ask all fifth graders to pick up at least one piece of trash every time they go to a local beach or waterway. My name is Indulaika. I go to Adams Elementary School in Eugene, Oregon, and my platform is free health care for the children of Oregon. My three-point plan is EVR. E stands for educate. We need to educate people because some people do not know that children are suffering from not having medical care. V stands for volunteer. We need volunteers to help raise awareness about this issue. And R stands for roll out the initiative. We need initiative to help get a, make a law for free health care. Hi, my name is Kate Moison, and I live in Kaiser. 
Um, I go to Optimum Learning Environment Charter School, and my platform is, um, oh my gosh, <laughs> my platform is the negative impact of pollution on animals. Um, my three-point plan is PAM, which stands for Pick Up Trash, Adopt an Animal, and Make Your Yard Animal Friendly. I chose this because I care about animals a lot. I'm very excited to be a member of the Oregon Kid Governor Cabinet. And Governor Leah, you can go come up and go ahead and join me and stand next to me. I'm going to give some quick remarks and then we're going to hear from you. So let's give it up one more time for our kid governor, Leah Andrus. <laughs> All right. You can just stand right here. Well, Governor Leah, I am so excited to join you today as you get inaugurated. Although I've got to ask, so I'm I'm the Secretary of State of Oregon, right? Like that's supposed to be a big deal, but I've never been inaugurated in the Senate chamber. So what kind of juice do you have? Like I, this is not where I took my oath of office. In fact, I think that we maybe had some kind of like freaky Friday body switching thing because I took my oath of office at an elementary school in Dufer. And you're taking your oath of office in the beautiful Oregon State Capitol. So either we switched bodies or you have some serious juice, and I'm really excited and proud to be associated with you. You know, it was fun when I went out to Hawkview Elementary to first meet Leah to announce in a surprise assembly that she was elected Oregon's 2023 kid governor. In fact, the principal told us that there had been a little bit of disruption at school the day before, and then she suddenly called an assembly and she said, I promise you, all these kids think they're in big trouble. And so it was really fun that instead of them getting in trouble, they were, here, they were there to hear about their own classmate being elected as Oregon's kid governor. And I will tell you what, I'm a mom of two young kids, so I know that kids can adjust on the fly pretty quickly. And if these kids thought they were going to be in trouble before going to this assembly, I will tell you, they flipped that switch really fast because they started chanting, 
Leah, Leah, Leah. And the entire gymnasium just started rocking like a rock concert as they celebrated their classroom. So I want to see if you all can do that as well. Can we start with me? Leah, 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 Leah. Y'all did okay, but I'm going to give it to the school, the classmates at Hawkview Elementary who were so excited to learn that their classmate had won 2023 Oregon Kid Governor. Leah, your message of kindness and stopping bullying really resonated with me as I told you on the day that we met. You know, when I was a fifth grader, my family was really struggling. My dad was a single parent raising three kids by himself. My mom was sick and battling addiction and was homeless on and off the streets of Portland. So I didn't always have the nicest clothes. I didn't have the most stable housing with my dad or the nicest house. And I certainly know that there were kids like you in my class because the kids at Dufer School where I grew up were kind to me, they were friendly to me, they didn't care that I didn't always have the coolest shoes or the coolest new backpack or didn't take the coolest trips with my family. They were kind and so I know that I had kids just like you working with me. And so Oregon's Kid Governor Program really lays the foundation for kids to be engaged in community. I'll tell you what, these kids, look around here, look at the kids in our lives, our cabinet members, our outgoing governor, our current governor. I can tell you with confidence, after having traveled the state, that we're sitting amongst kids who know more about our government and our civic life than the vast majority of, you're all, you got some nodding going on here. You're about to give me, yeah, you're telling me, you know that it's true. So we have some very, very engaged kids in the Kid Governor Program. And so I, we are part of a national network of kids in New Hampshire, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Connecticut. And they are connecting with Oregon to learn about the work that Leah will be doing to change her community. I mentioned at the beginning that Leah's platform is kindness. And it's stopping bullying through kindness. And in 2023, it's more important than ever for us to show kindness and understanding to people who might live differently, have different viewpoints than us. I know that your cabinet members have impressive topics as well, and I can't wait to see all that you achieve together. And I can look out here and I see a bunch of faces saying, cut it out, Fagan. We are ready to hear from our new kid governor, Leah Andrus. I'm so excited and honored to be here with you today. First, I want to start by saying thank you for being here and taking time out of your daily and busy life to support this amazing program. I just want to warn you, I have a long list of thank yous, but first, I want to say thank you to my siblings because they're probably bored out of their minds right now. <laughs> but jokes aside, I want to say thank you to our state secretary, Samia Fagan, and her team for managing the Oregon Kid Governor Program. Thank you for believing in kids like us. I want to say thank you to my teacher, Mr. Gregory, for introducing the Oregon Kid Governor Program and supporting me throughout the process. I also, I also want to say thank you to Ms. Conrad and our principal, Ms. Mitchell, and all the teachers throughout my life, because without them, I wouldn't be here. Also, a big thank you to my cabinet members, Amelia, Kate, Clyde, L, Ava, and Indaleka. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited to work with you and accomplish our goals together and make long life friends. I also wanted to say thank you to the 1,000 students in Oregon who participated in the election process. Thank you for believing in me and my cabinet. Lastly, I wanted to say thank you to my family. Thank you for supporting me, Mom, Dad. And thank you to my siblings for believing in me and lifting me up when I thought I wasn't going to make it. During my term, I hope that we can reduce bullying in our schools and in our communities through kindness. Like many of you, I've personally seen bullying in sporting games, at parks, and in our schools, and I believe that needs to change. 
I've been bullied, and I believe nobody should feel like that. Nobody should feel intimidated, intimidated, humiliated, and alone. That's why I believe we should have a weekly note program, which we write nice notes to each other in, in our classrooms. This program is called Toodles. This will help our classroom bond as we think about one another, encourage and appreciate our differences. I also hope our kind classrooms can have a kindness helper. A kindness helper can be any student, and they will be dedicated to look for anyone who may be lonely or need a friend. They can also report nice things that students have done to their teachers. This will help, well, this will allow everybody in our classroom to have an opportunity to serve and be more compassionate. Although we can implement kindness in our schools, it's only gonna happen if practiced in our homes. I would encourage students and adults to do one daily act of service in their homes. It can be as simple as doing dishes, saying hi to an elderly neighbor, picking up garbage or toys, or I know my parents would really, really enjoy this, but picking up my dog's poop. <laughs> one kind act of service can become a ripple effect. No one should ever feel hurt, alone, and unsafe. I'm, I'm so excited to be able to work and on changing people's lives for the better. Thank you for this opportunity, and let's make a change. Well, that's an impossible act to follow, so I'm not even going to try. I just want to thank you all for coming. Thank you to the Oregon State Senate for hosting. Thank you to the Honorable Former Chief Justice Paul Dominguez. This is not the first time he's done this. He is like the lifelong swearer inner of the Oregon Chief Justice Program, or excuse me, the Oregon Kid Governor Program. We should have an Oregon Kid Chief Justice Program as well. I think that'd be really fun. And I want to thank you, the families. I hope that in all of the celebration today that you take a moment to think, we're raising some amazing kids here in Oregon. So give it up for your children and for yourselves. Enjoy your state capital. I know that it's, it's actually more open than it has been for the past couple of years, but the construction is a lot. Um, yes, that's fish on the carpet. If you peek over on the house side, there's trees on the carpet. And if and when the gift shop is open, you can actually buy Senate socks that have this pattern on the carpet on it. So lots of memorabilia, but I just want to thank you and celebrate with you. And I'm so excited to see what these kids will come up with together. And I'm very, very excited because I trust that from Leah's platform, and most importantly, what Leah is going to lead the rest of Oregon kids to do, that we're going to have more kindness and less bullying here in the state of Oregon. Thank you for being here today.